form app is very, very easy to use. You just type a short description or something much more detailed and you start generating the presentation itself. As you can see here, and this is amazing, it has created a structure using 10 slides. And of course, I can remove each slide or I can change uh, where it's located. So this is something you can do it. Um, of course, we can also either generate all pages, so it's going to generate direct all pages, or start playing with layout. You see, this is the first page. Do I like this page? Do I like this with an image just created? Or do I prefer this slide? Um, whatever we do, we can change it. So, OK, I've settled with my first slide. Then I go to the next page. And it's generating images on the fly here. It's not getting images from a library. It's generating images. It's generating text on the fly. And of course, we can change that. So whatever you see here is being generated. Now, maybe it also has a library um, and, and does has a library uh, that it might get some images. But most of the uh, images you get here are generated uh, and the text itself. So next page. Generating the content. You see, it for every every slide, for every slide of my presentation that I request that it creates a 10 slide presentation, it gives me four different um, slide layouts I can uh, select from. So this is very elegant because it um, it saves a lot of time to me. And it brings me alternative content, so I can choose which one is OK with me. Um, of course, if I don't want to mess up too much with this, I can just say, OK, generate all pages, or I can regenerate it if I'm not satisfied with that. So generate all pages. It's going to create all 10 pages of the presentation, and it's going to bring them there. See it five, six. Now, everything here is created on the fly. This is not something that was stored somewhere. It's generating everything on the fly. So if you go and you tell it um, to create a similar presentation, it's going to generate um, different content. But of course, if it, um, if, it's talk if it talks about uh, historical figures, then okay, uh, it's gonna be the same, the same people, obviously, the same historical events, whatever, but not the the text. So right now it's generating. What is generating? Let's see a bit about the user interface. Um, on the left, uh, we can see uh, the pages, um, and of course, on the right, we can see some of the categories of tools, we can create um, additional content and insert additional content. Um, I asked it to create a 10-page uh, presentation, we created 11. OK, that's not a problem. Um, but I can also either delete a page, uh, move a page, or add more pages. So I'm not confined to the to what I suggested initially. I can come and I can create more pages. And of course, I can use a prompt to um, give more information on what I want to do. Now, I'm in the text box, and this is everything is um, a different uh, object, similarly to what you've been working already on uh, on PowerPoint. So I can change everything. Once I click on the text, I got um, the different uh, text um, formatting options. I can add um, links. I can add code. We don't care about that, of course. I can change the color. Uh, and I can even use AI edit. I can, If I don't like this, par this paragraph, I can use AI edit 
and I can just rewrite it. So when it rewrites something, it keeps to the same subject, but it generates different text. Um, and I can either try again or keep, now mind you, I started with 400 AI credits. Every time I'm using the AI features like auto-generating images, auto-generating text, I am consuming AI credits until I run out of them. That's why I said that the, there are no really completely free tools, but this is something that's very, very easy to use. And maybe for some of you, it, may, it might make sense to pay uh, the cost per month. Otherwise, we'll see later on how to uh, create most of these things with um, uh, ChatGPT and being created. Now, let's assume that we want to create another page. Add pages, as you can see here, we've got the layout templates, similarly to when we try to add another slide on, um, on PowerPoint. Uh, we do something quite similar, we choose style. So I'm going to ju just uh, select this, heading, uh, music in education, let's say. Uh, all right, now again, uh, music and education. I started writing this. I can go to AI edit, it's nothing. <laughs> it, it, it has filled my sentence. Um, now, uh, you can imagine how easy it is to recreate the, the rest of the text by just using titles and just starting sentences and it comes and it fills it out. Um, we're gonna talk about, let's say, not exactly the ethics of this, but let's let's keep it uh, in our minds. Um, okay, now I've got another slide about music and education and I've got another box that I'm going to uh, use uh, to upload or generate images. Before I do that, I can even search for the images, but um, it, it has its own libraries that it can um, borrow some. I can, of course, upload from my computer um, an image, which is always helpful, or I can generate, again, um, classroom in secondary school with students playing with musical instruments. This is very, very, let's generate your balance, okay. <clears throat> See, it's consuming, it's suggesting we go pro. But it has generated four images. And of course, we can select which one of these we can use. Um, <clears throat> regarding human-like AI generated images, some of the engines that we use, they don't quite generate very realistic, some of the engines. Um, and some of the faces appear distorted. This might be good for something that we want to do on the fly, but you might not like uh, the overall effect. And we've seen it many times. Uh, this is one of the drawbacks of using one of the uh, let's say easier to use engines or free to use engines, not quite free. Of course, you can always resort to the cartoony styles. Um, that's again up to you. Um, because we want to balance between something that's powerful enough and very, very easy to use, that's why we are. Um, working with tools that are a bit more simplistic, but they get the job done. So what you see here is that within few seconds, we have managed to create a presentation on the history of uh, music with text that corresponds to the actual eras of um, the history of music. And we have also generated images to go along with our slides and we can again, come and change uh, and edit the text. So 
this is something that can save us a lot of time in creating presentations for our everyday needs in school. Now, we will not take it for granted that um, the way that this has been created, I can just copy to my computer and go to my classroom and deliver this presentation to my students. It will require a lot of editing. But again, editing this thing, if it's gonna take us one hour to edit this presentation, it will sure be much better than devoting many hours, two, three, four, five, six hours doing the research on this, then finding the images to go with it, then creating the layout, then creating the text to go along. So I think the advantages for teachers needing to integrate presentations in their everyday teaching are quite evident here. And I'm not saying that we should use uh, PowerPoint or other presentation tools on a daily basis with our students, but this is something that's really uh, helping us a lot. So we got the slides here. And of course, we can also create some uh, more um, material content to go with it. Um, as we've seen now, we can uh, change the text, the heading, the caption. Uh, we can uh, drag by dropping and drag and dropping uh, different boxes. Now it has separated uh, my slide into three different um, columns. And again, I can come here, I can just drag a list. So now I've got a list here, or I can remove it altogether or move it somewhere else. Um, I can generate images or upload or search for images and include it in my slide, or more easily, I can just use uh, some shapes. Um, it's also very, very easy to create tables. I mean, this is quite, it talks on its own, show title, graphs, and I can very easily change now, if you're familiar with Excel um, or other um, uh, tools, um, I, I don't have to spend some more time on this. Um, everything that we add on a slide is an object that we can manipulate, resize, move to other places. And something that I really like is that it allows us to embed um, content from other applications like Twitter, embed parts of web pages, and even bring YouTube videos on our slides very easily. Um, now, one of the things that you might want to do once you create a presentation and start looking at your presentation, you might want to customize the, the look and feel. So from this palette here, you can change the theme to one of the already predefined. It changes everything similarly to how we will change a PowerPoint style. Uh, I can change uh, a single page or I can change the entire tone. Um, this application uh, calls every presentation we create a tone. So a tone is a multitude of, of pages. And I should mention here that the free account, it allows us to create up to five tomes. So please keep this in mind. So after we do this, so let's say we work with this, I created my presentation, I'm very happy with this. Uh, what do I do? This is obviously this is web-based. So I can, after I finish my presentation, I can go to the web browser in front of my students and I can play the presentation. So right now I'm using the presentation similarly to how I would um, if I was to use uh, PowerPoint. On the top, we've got the progress line where we've got the pages. We can go directly to one of these or I can use um, click this. Um, Currently, there are no tools like PowerPoint, for example, to write on the slide, but I think that's okay. 
um, yeah, we can go full screen as well. Uh, and we can also uh, export to PDF, but not for the free version. Uh, if we go to the paid version, then we can export whatever we do here as a PDF and even do some more customizations. Uh, but for simple work, for uh, creating a simple presentation almost immediately, almost instantly, um, yes, uh, that's it. It has, it has, um, it's a bit pricey, yeah, but it also depends on whether this is functionality that you really like. For example, if I was going to create presentations um, three, four times a week, or even three times a week for my students, um, the time that this will save me it's uh, it, it will be much more worth than uh, the cost of uh, the subscription per year and um, if i'm going to think a bit forward uh, somebody could say okay we could create all the presentations uh, we require and then stop the subscription and, and we've got them offline okay maybe you can do that as well uh, so in a nutshell let's go back and see uh, this now this is my main page these are the templates and of course there are many more templates here and this is the presentation that i have just created and i've used almost 170 um, <clears throat> of my let's say ai credits um, now what do i do with it um, I can also come on every slide because the prompt is here and I can still search images from web, add other objects or ask it to generate an image or something else. Add a slide about famous musicians of the 19th century so it it added a slide and of course um, now i've got four different layouts to choose from like previously but instead of creating a whole presentation, it just generated a single slide. So again, even if you have your presentation ready and you want to add something else, you can still go and say, okay, uh, how about you create this thing? And um, this is great. Um, let's so here, add, um a new slide with evaluation questions for my students on the history of music voila <laughs> so it it can also generate questions as well so you can have a presentation created almost instantly i mean just look at your watch when we start this presentation and in how many minutes we created a professional looking presentation with original text with original images and we also included um, questions for evaluation of our students so and this was done in a fraction of the time we will have required to do um, using more traditional methods. Now, there is a lot to discuss on this, and this is hopefully something we can do later. Um, um, the only thing I need to clarify here is that because you're talking about using this in a science fair or using it with students, it goes without saying that these are tools that are going to help the teacher preparing their teams 
to participate in a project regarding art or it's going to help a teacher like me, like you, go to the classroom tomorrow and teach their students about a specific topic. Um, these are not tools that we want our students to use to generate presentation um, on a subject that we need them to research because we need them to learn from that. But this is something that we'll discuss later. I'm just clarifying that. Now, let's go back to this. I started with 400 AI credits and now I'm down to 167. That means that in a very few minutes, I'm, I have spent more than half of what I had. So it goes without saying that if I try to create a second presentation about something else, I'm not going to be able to use the same functionality to the same extent. So what do I do? I'm, uh, probably I'm a teacher on a budget. I want to, don't want to spend so much money on that. So what do I do? Um, fortunately, there are solutions that are not this elegant because as you see in Tomes, it's very, very elegant, very, very easy to use. We can create specific content within a slide on the fly, um, even create, I mean, the entire presentation within minutes. But if we don't want to spend money on subscriptions, then what we can do is use three different tools. Obviously, one is going to be PowerPoint or Google Slides or Apple Keynote or um, OpenOffice, um, whatever, you, whatever tool you like for your presentations. Now, the other tool is ChatGPT, which is free, at least version 3.5. In 3.5, we can ask it in Greek, Turkish, English, whatever, to create, create the structure for a presentation with 10 slides on the history of music. Essentially, it's going to do the same thing, but it's going to give us the outline. Let's go back a bit. Um, slide one, title slide. Introduction, prehistoric music, ancient music, medieval music, Renaissance music. Let's go back to this. Prehistoric, ancient, medieval, Renaissance, Baroque, classical. So, okay, this we added later, romantic music. Obviously, if you're talking about the history, and I'm not expert in the history of music, so I cannot judge whether this is uh, valid or not. But obviously, if you're researching the history of something, then you have some um, solid points of reference. Uh, and you can see the similarities here. <coughs> Sorry. These are just outlines. But these outlines, again, will enable me very easily to launch my presentation application and create these slides with these titles. The only thing I'm going to have to copy paste them or uh, do it manually. And then if I want more information, let's say in the notes part of the slide or as the body of the slide, um, write a short description in 20 words about Baroque music. And that's it. It can even give me, so this is what I wrote. Um, and of course, I can regenerate that better. <laughs> So we can create that, and, and this is free. There are no, there are no AI uh, points or something. We can 
use it. But this is more manual, but it's free. And it's a lot of help as well. I mean, we, it, it really, really uh, is much better than researching the topic on our own uh, from scratch. And again, yes, it's better to research something because we learn from it. But if we want to create three or four presentations every week for our students, it's impossible to do it with the time we've got in hand. So we need some help. So this is very important. Now, OK, we got this. We got the outline. This is great. Um, how about um, we create some images to go with it? Um, we can go to a very simple tool like bing.com create. Again, this is not really, it's, it's based on DALI, but it's, um, it's um, not really the best tool I've uh, used, but it's very simple. It's extremely simple. And um, we still have the points here, the boosts, but they get regenerated by Microsoft. So this is something that we could use very easily. And Mind you, this is something that I've been using for my AI book in education. That I'm going to show you in a while. So we need some images, Renaissance music. Um, create an images on... Uh, Ren, uh, apologies, I'd rather use the correct spelling. Music and include notation and again back and forth and um, musical instruments of the era that's it create so it's gonna go and create again four different images that I will need, uh, that I, I will be able to use in my presentation or store my computer or do whatever I want with them. That's it. And of course, I can be much more specific with the instructions that I'm, I'm giving to Bing. And look at this. This is this is something that it was created on the fly. This is original um image created on the fly it doesn't exist it, it didn't exist two seconds ago i can even style so you can even choose style you are going to create the images That's it. So by using ChatGPT, again, you can create an account, it's free. We can ask it to create the entire structure of a presentation with the text. And of course, we can um, create more text to be more precise and give more detail. And of course, for every slide or for additional slides, we can use Bing.com to generate the images to go with it. Now, I'm not an expert in music. Actually, my knowledge in music is very, very limited. But uh, at the same time, if we're going to create something for teaching our students, we cannot just rely on what the engine created. We have to read it again. We have to make sure that there are no misconceptions created by the AI. And we've seen it, and I see it all the time. Obviously, it's going to get better in two, three, four, five years. But um, it still needs for us to go through with it and also to adjust it to the level of our students. So to go back to the main tool, 
Tome is a fantastic tool that can create presentations on the fly. You go to the website tome.app, you, um, you create an account and you start using the free version or you can go and you can upgrade to the um, uh, pro account. The main benefits of this is that it generates everything within seconds without having to rely on three different programs like a presentation package, ChatGPT to generate the text, Bing.com to create the, the images. So whatever you do, you do it from here. And it's extremely flexible, extremely flexible. You've seen how it created the images, how it created slide, single slides on the fly, the multiple layouts, the objects I can bring, and everything else and of course the prompt that goes directly to create more content now you have to balance between what you want to do how often you create presentations for what reason you create the presentations and if it's something that's really going to save you a lot of time on a weekly basis, then yeah, maybe getting this is gonna be a good uh, idea. Um, there are alternative applications to the Tome, and one of the ones I like is an extension to Google Slides. But again, from all the applications I've seen and used, I believe that Tome is uh, the most user-friendly, straightforward, and easy to use. And they've got a similar um, similar, uh, similar charges. So it's not that uh, something out there exists that at the moment is much cheaper. So you could um, do with some of the, um, some, some less functionality. So it's up to you on uh, which of the two um, solutions you are using, either Tome or a combination between ChatGPT and Bing.com. Uh, now, this is, not, um, this is not a tutorial on how to create presentations. This is not the scope of uh, this webinar. Uh, so we're not going to elaborate on uh, how to use images, what size, what resolution, the size of text and everything. We're assuming that you're already familiar with that. Um, the scope of today's uh, webinar was to familiarize you with some of the tools we can use using AI to generate presentations very, very fast and very in a very efficient uh, way. Uh, so, and this is uh, where I stop talking. <laughs> Uh, and uh, but before I do that, I would like to show you something that's gonna help you a lot. Now, this is a website. I've got two books here. Python ebook is an introduction to Python. It's in Greek, English, and been translated. All the images were created using AI. But what you might be more interested in is this book on AI. Um, it's going to be completed by the end of the month. And one of the chapters of this book is on how to create presentations. And what we covered today is a part of this. Now, this is created as, as an ebook. So explain exactly what um, AI is and how we use and how to use ChatGPT and how to do maths using ChatGPT and how to create uh, text. So this is something for another time. But um, this book is um, something that you might find useful and it gets updated all the time. So right now, I'm at 73 pages out of 160 and you can follow this link on the website matthews.org um, 
to download the latest version of the book. Again, it will feature whatever we've shown here. So we recreate that in, in the book. Uh, now, I'm going to stop here and uh, I will prefer that we devote the rest of the time in uh, discussions with you on how to use these tools and uh, maybe what your objections might be in using AI tools for preparing presentations. Anyway, I would like to start the discussion. Pericles. Alexandre, I'm not sure if you said that, but uh, any AI generated image, can it be subject to copyright by anyone or is it, uh, is it free to use? Okay, um, the, the US Supreme Court, they have uh, decided that AI generated images are not, uh, cannot be copyrighted. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot comment on that. <laughs> but uh, my guess is that um, whatever we create, if we give uh, very detailed um, descriptions to something, then it's going to create a specific image based on that. Obviously, this is not something that was really generated by us, but um, we, we got a lot of examples in the history of computer graphics uh, with random images created that were uh, actually copyrighted. So the, um, the idea and notion of um, AI, the copyright of AI generated images is uh, a bit complicated. Uh, having said that, my book, which uh, is based on the, the graphics array I generated and both of my books, um, they are created under a Creative li um, Commons license. But what I'm licensing here, um, it's, uh, it's not the, um, the images uh, themselves, but the, the actual creation of the book, which I have to say, that the text was not AI generated. Um, actually, after I created the, ma the main contents of the book and I started writing it, um, out of curiosity, I asked ChatGPT to generate the, um, the contents of this book, and it did. And uh, personally, I didn't, I didn't quite like them. Uh, but that's part of um, liking. So yeah, there's a lot of discussion on that. <coughs> Any other questions or things you want to ask? Yes. Uh, hi, Alexandros. Thank you for this lovely presentation. Uh, and also, I would like to uh, share one of the um, chat GPTs that I have created. It's related to, to teachers that are using Lego elements, especially Lego education materials. Uh, so, but the thing is, it's available for on uh, for the uh, pro users. Um, I have uploaded the Lego Education's 4C approach or 5E approach uh, and also the documentation about some sets. So if you type into this uh, chatbot and say, let's create a, a lesson plan uh, for uh, year six students uh, about frog cycle using lego education products uh, it creates a nice outline so if there are any pro users uh, i'm going to share the link in the uh, chat comments as well okay <coughs> um, maybe you can show that you can share the screen if you want 
Um, okay. Um, okay, I think my security, okay, Google. until um, we can, yeah, Mert? Uh, we can hear you. I'm so sorry, because of the security settings, I need to restart uh, Google Chrome. Uh, please, you go on, Alexandros. I will try to reopen it on another page. One thing to keep in mind, and this is very, very important, is that um, we cannot, as I mentioned earlier, we cannot just generate content uh, using either the presentation application or ChatGPT on, on its own and just uh, take it as it is and just uh, present it to students. There are two main issues here that we need to consider. The first of all is, uh, of course, we need to edit it in order to bring it closer to the needs of our students. And um, most of you are um, expert teachers, so you know very, very well that even the worksheet you created for um, second grade last year, and you've got a second grade this year, it might need adjustment because the level of uh, students this year is either higher or lower than last year's. Uh, so similarly, we cannot take something um, that is automatically generated and take it as it is and use it for students. Now, this is one of the reasons we have to adjust it. Now, the other reason is that in many cases, um, that I've, I've been using it for quite some time, um, in many cases, I can see some discrepancies and some information which is not quite correct. And uh, it's very important for us to go through, uh, to go over whatever we're going to use with our students. Ah, yeah. Mert, can you explain us what we see here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So this is the ChatGPT window. Uh, this is one of the things I have created. Actually, it's not a big deal. I mean, anyone can do it. Uh, but this is only for the ones that are using the plus version, ChatGPT4, or the pro version, let's say. Um, I have uploaded some documents that I have or I have created. So here you can just say, um, let's say for nursery, which uh, Lego education products I can use to teach STEAM. And the good part is um, actually this bot knows the Lego products and can search for it uh, and generate you nice answers. I don't know if you can see it now. Yes, we can. Okay, so it says Lego Education Steam Park, Coding Express, Story tales, build me emotions, tech machines, my Excel world, etc. And it gives detail uh, on each one of them. You can even say, I have, you know, let's say eight years old kids. Uh, I'm not sure either to use Spike Prime or Spike Essential. So again, it can give you some suggestions. 
or you can just say create a lesson plan about frog cycle using Lego education kits or sets, let's say. Again, you will see that it's going to think about the sets that are uploaded or the Lego education has, and it starts to create. Look, lesson plan exploring the frog life cycle with Lego education. So now it wanted to use, because it says second grade, uh, it wanted to use the Lego Duplo bricks. Um, but again, if you can just talk about the, or tell it the, the age groups or the classes, uh, it really generates nice lesson outlines from introduction, connect, construct, contemplate, and these are the four C's that Lego education uh, uses. So uh, if there are any teachers in our group using Lego sets uh, or just any Lego bricks, uh, they can try this bot as well. Well, this is this is great, Mert, and uh, I think we should go back to the presentation because again, any presentation is part of the um, of the lesson. So you generate lesson plan. So. Um, I'll, I'll show them uh, in front of presentation how to use ChatGPT to create just that. So we, we, we're going to get a bit more lazy. <laughs> but let me share it again. Let me share it again. Uh, so it's the screen. Now, all right. Now I'm sharing my screen again. Now we created a presentation. That's great. Uh, now. ChatGPT rem rem remembers that we create the above. Now, create a lesson plan for teaching uh, the history of music using the above slides as an introduction. So it's we, we not only generated the presentation for that, but it's also creating the lesson plan and even the homework assignment on that. Uh, create a worksheet for students on the history of music. And this is complete worksheet. We don't have to like that. We don't have to even agree with this, with its comment, but it's creating it. And of course we can create a lesson plan for secondary education students on the history of music. Now it's bringing it in two days. Yeah, it's logical. Assessment, even assessment. Uh, and we can create a lesson plan for teaching history of music to primary school students. Well, it's not very easy, so just simplify the above. <clears throat> and that's it. So we, we, we created the presentation, content and images. 
we created a lesson plan and we created worksheet as well. So within minutes, we have created the entire material. It will have taken us probably a whole day of work to do. But again, and this is very important, and it's even written on the bottom, it can make mistakes, consider checking important information so we don't just copy paste. <laughs> and it, it can even, um, uh, from, um, right, the same lesson plan in Turkish. AI tends to learn from all the data and all our interactions with it. So right now it's more adapted to using English text because most users are English speaking, but it can work in Turkish, in Greek and in other languages as well. And this is tried and tested. Uh, right, the above. Lesson plan in Greek. <clears throat> um, now, I, I don't speak Turkish, but in Greek, there are, are some uh, errors when it's writing in Greek, but these are minor. We can very easily correct them. And again, it really beats having to write the entire thing from scratch. And if you want to be a bit more adventurous, <laughs> ah, okay, it, it it can create Caligon though. Okay, okay, <laughs> right. The history of music in Caligon. It did. It did. It did. Um, okay. All right, no Klingon. Uh, it did create, um, though, uh, a poem in Klingon the other day. So, um, essentially, within less than an hour, we have created a presentation, including images, on the history of music, a complete lesson plan. We adjusted it to secondary and primary education, and also a worksheet for assessment for students. And, well, this is scary. Uh, but it, it, it opens um, huge prospects for whatever. Uh, so, any questions, anything you want to discuss about the things we've seen today? No. <laughs> Um, what I do suggest is that you play with these tools. Start with Tone, which is a very good tool. Start with this, then start playing. If you haven't already, probably to, since you are here, you probably have worked with it. Uh, start playing with ChatGPT and um, an image creator like Bing and then see how it goes from there. And of course, um, take a look at the AI book. From this page, it gets updated. It's gonna be in 160 pages, and this is the English version. As soon as finished, it's gonna have a Greek version and a Turkish version, and hopefully an Italian version soon. And uh, that's about it. We're gonna have another webinar soon how to use AI in coding programming, scratch extensions and uh, other programming tools using AI, which is great. I'm gonna show you how to create video games very easily using AI. Uh, but if there are no more questions or things to discuss, I think we can conclude it here. 
Um, I do hope you found this interesting and um, you will have something to work with using during the weekend. All right. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, this has been uh, recorded, uh, unfortunately, not from the beginning. So it's going to be uploaded um, on YouTube um, and we're going to email you the link. Um, and in a few days, we're going to um, delete all your uh, information from there as well. Uh, so thank you for being here tonight. Um, have a good evening and hope to see you in our next webinar. Thank you, Alexander.